All right, welcome to our March Q&A. We're here with Chris Eckel and Jen Hudak. We'll Hello. start with some updates and then go to questions that we have in advance and then feel free to send in other questions as well. Okay. You're starting. I'm starting? Yeah. We've just like going down the list? On the updates. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Heard there was an MC here. Um, <sighs> So, uh, some updates on the building expansion. Uh, we are moving along. Um, this week and last week has been moving uh, a whole lot of just kind of earth redistribution to make room for uh, the loading dock, uh, to uh, flatten out the uh, interior spaces of the buildings to prep for concrete. Uh, we have 20 concrete trucks uh, full of concrete to arrive on Tuesday. So we're gonna do all the groundwork. Um, the flat work there and after that it's it's I mean there's still buildings so there's not a whole lot inside as far as um, you know wiring plumbing all that internal stuff which is very traditional for like a residential place uh, is actually the quickest part of this process for us so uh, the buildings are erected uh, we do just have an, uh, a, a lot of that um, flat work to do the interior mechanicals um, and then garage doors. That's kind of the big thing that we're, uh, we're, we're still waiting on to close out the buildings. Um, that'll hopefully be done within the next month or so. Um, still kind of waiting on the manufacturer for those, but we are making a lot of progress. Um, we're gonna be shifting the, even the R&D version, I think, of uh, Topo 2 production into that space uh, in, in the rather short term. So uh, we're getting there, it's taking a lot longer than we hoped um a year and a half longer than we hoped but uh, uh making progress and we'll be there soon so as far as um i mean that's the update on the building expansion we can talk about the top 02 line in a little bit because i think that's one of the questions so next my turn all right spare tire update uh, we announced the spare tire for the Top 02, which is very exciting. Um, if you recall seeing any of the uh, frame design, um, there's actually like a, a hexagon shape in between uh, the mounting points of the free ride suspension, and that is actually uh, designed for the spare tire. So it's an undermount spare tire. Um, it will be uh, raised and lowered uh, just using a hand crank. Um, it will have the same dimension as our tire that comes on um, the Top 02, but it is not the exact same wheel and tire setup. Um, so uh, that will allow it to, regardless of whether you get the upgraded tire or have the standard tire option, this spare tire will be able to be used in place of either of those. Um, and it's $650, did I say that already? I don't remember. No. Um, which is pretty great. It's even uh, less expensive than the option that we have on the original Topo um, and works really seamlessly. So let us know if you have any more questions about that. I do imagine one of the questions will be about clearance. Oh yeah, thank you. I meant to say that. It does not impact uh, the ground clearance of your trailer. So it is like recessed into that spot and due to its position between the trailing arms, there's no impact on the ground clearance on your trailer. Compared to Topo 1, right? I mean, it, Topo 2 has more ground <coughs> clearance overall. If it were to not be there, you'd have uh, more center clearance, but it's it does not sit below the trailing arms, right? So right. that's where you still have considerably more, even with the spare tire, considerably more clearance than you would have um, in like the rear differential of your vehicle uh, or where the water tank sits in Topo 1. So uh, in all of our history of building these, we've never had somebody come back and say, hey, I hit a rock and punctured our water tank underneath the trailer. Can I get a new one? Um, so we really feel like that sweet spot of like 12 to 15 inches is, is really generous for clearance. And that is still attainable yeah. with Topo 2 and spare. It's like 18 inches even to the to that spare tire. The Topo 2 has 23 inches of ground clearance um, as it stands. So uh, still a lot of room underneath that trailer. Ambassadors. And oh, I'll talk about yeah, that. That's you. Yeah. 
and Victoria. She's behind the lens, but she, uh, uh, Victoria and Jess, as a matter of fact, they've worked very hard on rolling out our ambassador program. We're super excited about this. So um, they, for 2022, have been selected, both of our, um, our pod guides and our trailblazers. So pod guides serve the purpose of essentially being Escapod representatives all throughout the US. Um, they have been uh, generous enough to allow interested customers to view their trailers. So if you live outside of Utah and you have been dying to see an Escapod in person, um, reach out to our team, podpros at escapod.us, and they can help you get connected with a pod pro, um, or sorry, a pod guide in your area to come and see a trailer in person. Uh, and then our trailblazers will be, um, again, representatives of Escapod and really helping us on the content side. So they're also throughout the US, live in different areas, all have different ways of using their trailers and interacting with the outdoors. So they'll be helping with generating some content, sharing their tips and tricks about teardrop trailer ownership, um, some of their favorite locations that they might go to, uh, camp recipes, all of that good stuff. So there will be a lot more to come. We're super excited about this program and if any of our ambassadors are watching thank you we're really really happy to have you a part of it yeah can we do a cameo you you mentioned jess and victoria and enter they've, they've, enter they've been behind scene. the camera on all of these and i just they're great so i want to come say hi come say hi <laughs> victoria and jess and jess thank you so much <laughs> appreciate you um Good people. That's a great segue into needing more good people. We need um, more good people. So we, uh, <laughs> we're hiring for a lot of positions. Um, one of the biggest pushes we have this year is with the development of the new building and the new Topo 2 line is we are, are trying to preempt that a little bit and really get good people in, get them trained. Um, we have wonderful training materials and processes that we're developing for Topo 2. So we're hoping to kind of be much more seamless with that and not rely on tribal knowledge as much as we have in the past five years with our original topo um, but we're hiring uh, assemblers craftspeople uh, kitters because we're moving to um, kind of a more traditional manufacturing setup where we have our warehouse separate from our manufacturing line and that's something that's a luxury that we've not been able to uh, entertain for the last five or six years uh, mainly because space has always been a limitation so Basically, the entire space we have right now that we're manufacturing in, um, doing the final assembly in, is going to be warehouse space. So this is going to be racking, uh, storage, um, having a little bit more lead time with our inventory uh, internally. So we need people to be able to pull from the shelf, arrange kits, deliver those to the line just in time, um, mm -hmm. and, and really make that manufacturing process seamless. So um, we got some really smart people who are helping us design that system. Um, and we need implementers for that. So um, in addition to that, uh, fabricators, welders, uh, the assembly shop, which is basically our CNC operations. We did get another CNC machine. So um, more operators, more assemblers, more people who like doing cool stuff and working with their hands. Um, so uh, we're taking all that. Um, I think we're currently interviewing for GM stuff as well. We got a lot of applications for that. Um, but that's definitely one we're putting a lot of thought into. So uh, if you're like the perfect GM candidate and you haven't gotten in yet, uh, still give us a holler. Yeah. All right, so our first questions are about the original Topo. And the first one is, they're looking for an update on charging and monitoring on the original Topo with inverter and solar. So maybe, battery levels being able to check that is that wanting an overview from us right now or wanting like a reference overview for like a video that maybe our warranty and maintenance team could develop or are they talking about a unit that is similar to what we're using in topo 2 that allows you to see those monitor those levels from one That's single location guess. people do ask about this and i think yeah. usually they're wanting just for when they're out on the road to be able to What's the easiest way to know yeah. where things are at? Um, so if you have an original topo uh, with an inverter um, and a solar panel, there are a couple different ways that you can monitor those levels. Uh, the solar panel charger is located in the rear galley area um, in the large storage behind the cutting board. 
uh, cutout, and that will give you a read on how much charge you are getting from the solar panel actively in that moment, as well as what the voltage levels of your battery are. Um, and then the inverter similarly has um, something that, that will, a monitor on the unit itself, which is located inside the cabin in the headboard. Uh, that will give you a readout on what the power draw currently is on the trailer. The Actually, the solar panel, um, the solar controller will do that as well. So it'll tell you if you have appliances plugged in, how much power is being drawn off of uh, that the unit in that moment. It'll also tell you the current voltage levels of your battery. Uh, and then if you are charging, it will tell you what the, the charge is coming in at. Um, we don't currently have a, an, a whole like system overview monitor uh, like we do on the Topo 2, which gives you a readout on overall battery life and estimated uh, battery life in a day count. So on Topo 2, it will tell you, you know, we estimate you have one day and 21 hours left of your battery at this current usage level. Um, we don't currently have something like that for Topo 1. However, we are always evaluating common requests and things that we hear of. So if there are certain features that you're missing on our trailers, please let us know. Um, again, you can email podpros at escapod.us. Um, we can't always guarantee we can do something about it, but we definitely file it away and make a note of it. And when we see that there are requests that we're seeing over and over again, we do what we can to implement those into future options. I think the other thing that I, I'm sure uh, during handoff, uh, Jeremy goes over, um, but interpreting voltage into a percentage is a relatively easy conversion. Um, it's not necessarily intuitive, um, but you can easily look up online and say, you know, what does a full battery equal when it comes to voltage? Traditionally, when you take something off charge, it's going to need about 30 or 40 minutes to kind of find equilibrium. Um, anything above 12.8 volts running through your system is considered a full charge on your battery. Once you get down into the 12 point, you know, three, four, you're gonna to wanna to start to get it on charge. Once you get down into the 11s, certain aspects of your trailer will still work, but since you run a 12 volt system, that's when you're like really getting close to zero. Um, and especially uh, what will be a consideration uh, for Topo 2 is that you don't wanna to get too low on a lithium battery else you'll get locked out. Um, so a lot more training and stuff on that. That's why the monitor is so much more helpful when we have a lithium setup. Um, deep cycle batteries are much more friendly towards uh, truly kind of dying, dying and <laughs> being brought back, back to back life. To life. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's very easy to get that percentage of knowing what 100% is, 90, 80, and so on. Um, and, and those are easy cheat sheets that if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you see you're running 12.4, you can figure out what that means pretty quickly. All right, our next question is from Jimmy. And he says, water freezes at 32 degrees. What temperature does it freeze in the water tank on the original Topo? Is it the same? Yes. yes. <laughs> water always freezes at 32 degrees. Um, I think that the question here does lead to, um, you know, it, again, not, I know we're in the original Topo section, but I can't not speak about the difference here compared to the Topo 2. Um, the Topo 2, because the water tank is located inside of an insulated trailer, there is some retained heat. So even if it is below 32 degrees outside, um, you're not going to freeze that tank in the same amount of time that you might otherwise freeze your tank on an original Topo where the tank is external of the trailer. So it's an undermount uh, mounted to the bottom of the trailer in the original Topo. And if it is 32 degrees outside, then you, you stand the chance of freezing the tank water eventually, but when it is a larger volume of water there and it's a plastic tank, there's some room for expansion. What we really worry about on the original Topo is if there is water into the water pump into a small enclosed space as that freezes and it will freeze more quickly at 32 degrees in a smaller space. Um, as water freezes, it expands and that expanding can lead to cracking on um, the water pump. If there's uh, water in the water heater, it can cause some damage there as well. So that's why we advise against um, using your water system if you are going to be spending extended periods of time below that 32 degree mark. Any additions? Agreed. Water always freezes at 32 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> All right. Um, Ezra would like to know about the max air options. 
um, since they have standard and deluxe options and there are some pretty cool features on the deluxe fan, is it possible to upgrade to that Max Fan Deluxe? Um, you know, we, we put one of those deluxe fans in. Um, at this point, it's been a few years since we used it. Um, it's one of those things that we kind of categorized as cool but unnecessary. Um, automation, remote controls, things like that, that um, I think are, are much better for uh, bigger RVs where it may be harder to kind of reach the ceiling and control these things by push buttons is really, I think, where that thing is kind of meant to be, kind of have its value in more of an automated setting. Um, we find that in our trailer, the, the, the speed fan that we use that is manual operation um, is fully sufficient for, for what we need. Um, and what we're willing to stock and keep inventory of and put on our base trailer. That said, the cutout is the same. If you want to do a post, you know, build retrofit option yourself, like it just requires a little bit of wiring and, and you can absolutely do that. There's nothing keeping you from it. Um, it is not something that we have any intention of um, including, you know, and that's just uh, not, not meant to in any way be dismissive of the features that you like on this. It is more so just an evaluation process of what we see as uh, a cost versus a benefit. And it's one of those things that we uh, are trying to keep our costs down as much as we can and only increase cost and, and material cost when we see a lot of added value for every customer. So um, that's one thing where um, we hear you. Uh, it's probably not something that we're gonna change anytime soon on our base model. Okay, and I did forget to mention he was asking about um, the built-in rain shield in particular. So I don't know if you have any comments the about the value of that. The built-in rain shield, my knowledge of that, which is, is admittedly very limited, um, is it's more of a sensor that like closes the uh, lid when it, it senses rain. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's, it's kind of one of those cool things that um, the way that our, our lid opens up, it only opens to about, you know, like 40, 35, 40 degrees anyway. Um, so there's not a whole lot of, of water entry, even if that is left open. Um, but it's one of those things where, you know, if you're at camp and it looks threatening, just like close it a little bit and you'll be protected. Um, but it's, uh, it's one of those levels of automation that we just didn't feel like added a whole lot of value across the board. And they are more expensive. And you lose remote, remote controls. They're infuriating and easy to misplace in general. <laughs> Michael has no opinions about anything. <laughs> <laughs> Another oh, question we get a lot is just about our lead time. So if you mm -hmm. wanted to share um, anything about our current lead time for original Topo and, and uh, Topo 2 as well. Our current lead time is eight months. That is the shortest that it has been in a long time. Um, about a year and a half. Yeah. I think we got it down maybe to a little shorter than that for all of a month in 2020 and then, yeah. you know, things happened. Um, so we are back down to uh, about eight months right now um, and doing everything we can to continue streamlining um, our production process. We actually just hired a new process engineer that will be starting in a couple weeks with us whose sole purpose is finding ways to streamline and optimize our um, production line specifically for the original Topo. Uh, so that's super exciting. Um, but yeah, make sure you visit our site, play with our build tool uh, on the original Topo. We have 29 different add-ons, so only one base model um, on the original Topo, and then you can customize it to really suit your, your needs from there. There's a ton of options on there, and it's, it's fun to just go and play with, so check it out. Um, we're about similar lead time on the Topo 2. Um, as Echo mentioned earlier, the, uh, the building expansion is really the gating item there. We're feeling pretty good about the timeline at this point, um, looking at like October, November delivery if you were to place an order for a Topo 2 today. Right. And speaking of Topo 2, our question there is, are we starting to roll them out? <laughs> and when do we expect that to happen? <laughs> uh, yeah, so right now we are, um, I'd say probably 60, 70% of the way through our, uh, what we're calling our beta build. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that having uh, uh, facility woes with our steel building being a little bit delayed is that we've decided to use that time to be really, really thorough 
not only with the evaluation of our original prototype build and, and the opportunities for improvement, um, but really even continuing that on our, our second build and going through and, and there were you know, probably thousands of little tiny changes uh, from the first to the second one. And we're making those little improvements from the second to the third one as well. So um, we are taking our time while we have it or while we're kind of forced to have that time. Um, but we are getting all the processes dialed, we're getting the people hired, so we're training people how to build these things, um, and we are getting our vendors in place, and, and for anybody who uh, is even tangentially uh, exposed to the supply chain world right now, that is probably the most important factor in ensuring a successful Topo 2 launch, is, is having the right vendors, getting the purchase orders and projected POs um, signed, agreed upon, uh, inventory levels, you know, on our vendor side, uh, really set, because um, that will help us once we do kind of fully shift into production to really hit the ground running. Um, so that's where we're at with that. Uh, we have a lot of exciting developments uh, with the new one, uh, the beta build. Uh, it's green, which I love. Um, it's got a lot of other cool things that we just didn't kind of get around to including on the first one, but are accessories that uh, are officially listed on the site for add-on, like rock rails and. Um, the actual production AC unit, I think, that we'll be mm -hmm. using. Yep. Um, There's also uh, all of our magnets. If you uh, if you follow us, magnets. we are obsessed with magnets. Um, and the one of the cool things about the Topo 2 is really the way that body is designed. So it's it's built using a process called infusion. Uh, so the structure is actually infused into you know essentially a fiberglass sandwich to use Eccles terminology. Mm -hmm. a few layers of fiberglass, then a PET core in the middle, and then more fiberglass, um, which makes it extremely strong but also lightweight. Um, the cool part about that infusion process is that it allows us to build into uh, the body um, like th other features. So if we need reinforcement somewhere or magnets somewhere, we can actually just have those uh, constructed in the body construction process. So we're using a magnet, which is entirely hidden as the shower mount. So you're not going to see some bulky contraption on the side of your trailer when you need to mount your shower head there. It's just a magnet hidden inside of the body. Um, same thing for the door catches. Um, we also added some magnets to the cutting board. So instead of needing to do a swing down on that, which has a tendency to kind of um, scratch the surface of the HDPE. We put really strong magnets in there. So that just pops in really easily. Uh, we also used magnets on the removable panel to access the Truma. Um, I was playing with that yesterday and it works really well. So all those little things that are, um, door covers. the door covers, yep. Um, for the stargazer, as well as the door screens and the window covers for the, the side doors. Uh, we also redesigned the, um, the table attachment to the fender. So that's gonna be a lot more intuitive to use and also more stable once it's in place. So we're super excited about that. Uh, but it's all these little tiny details that we, we get a little bit obsessed with, um, but also is why we build some of the greatest trailers out there. So we hope you can appreciate it and can't wait to have beta out on the road um, that will be with us at Overland West in May. So come check it out. Yeah, and Sea Otter. Ooh, maybe not. We won't, um, I don't know. Not beta. TBD. <laughs> Take that back. <laughs> TBD. Sorry, California. <laughs> <laughs> we will have a topo two with us. Yes. It might be alpha. Yes, what she said. <laughs> um, all right, we have a couple of general questions and then we'll get to a couple that have come in as we are doing this Q&A. So the first general is, are we going to Texas? Um, and follow up, are we doing any Escapod owner events? Ah. <laughs> um, we very much want to. We have lots of great ideas about that. We have so many ideas. Uh, we don't, we're hiring. So <laughs> <laughs> you want a job. Um, we, another thing that uh, Victoria and Jess and our sales specialist Shauna have been working really hard on um, is a pop-up tour. We will be announcing details of that. Uh, sometime. Um, it'll likely be happening kind of early summer this year where a Topo 2 will head out on a giant road trip. Um, I do think Texas will be 
a part of that route at this point. Um, as far as owner events, we have some really amazing ideas for owner events. Uh, we do not know if we have the resources to execute on those ideas um, this year, just with everything else that we have been um, juggling, but it is on our radar and we would really, really, really love to, to do something. So um, yeah, again, email podpros at askpod.us if that's something you want to see happen and uh, tell us what your hopes and dreams for something like that would be. And that just helps us once we are able to execute on it, make sure that we are satisfying everybody's needs. And if any of our owners want to take on the task of planning and doing that, yeah. we'll, we'll come. <laughs> we'll come join, but uh, yeah, bandwidth right. is we'll help. limited. I think there's been some chatter about that on the owners group on Facebook, so cool. great. check that out and you know, we can do some unofficial events if customers want to I can't think of a better reason for that group existing on Facebook than to plan things like this. So yeah. if you guys want to get together, uh, by all means, go forth, have fun. And if we can find the weekend that's right, we'll, yeah. we'll come out with the top of two and we'll join. All right. Next, um, you touched on this a little bit already, Jen, but just maybe giving an overview of what events uh, we will be attending this year. And of course, we'll hope for those owner events next year. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so we are attending Sea Otter next month, so about a month from now. Um, that's in Monterey, California. It's a really cool event. It's a big bike industry event, uh, and they have a, a giant bike race that takes place in conjunction with it. Um, we will be there with an original Topo as well as a Topo 2, so you can see both trailers in person and really touch and feel our product, which, you know, if you haven't had the chance to see one of our trailers in person, it really makes a huge difference. Um, especially if you're looking at the Topo 2 and you've seen other teardrops and you're trying to make sense of, of this product. Um, what we hear repeatedly from people when they see it in person is just how much bigger and more spacious it feels than what it looks like on pictures. It, it looks relatively similarly sized um, to the original Topo, um, which, you know, as far as the, the uh, span of the wheels is concerned, you know, it doesn't take up a larger footprint, um, but because we have that composite body, we were able to go over the wheel wells and expand the interior of the body by about a foot. And that foot feels very significant when you're actually interacting with the trailer. So we'll be at Sea Otter. That is, does it say on here? April 7th, 7th to 10th. Um, after that, we will be at Overland Expo West down in Flagstaff, Arizona. That is May 20th to 22nd. Uh, again, we will be there with an original Topo and a Topo 2. Um, we're also attending Overland Expo PNW this year. So it'll be our first time at an event up in the Pacific Northwest, which we're really excited about. Um, is that in, that's in Bend? Bend. That's yeah. in Bend, Oregon. Um, so if that's nearby or you think Bend is a cool place you'd like to visit, which it is and you should, uh, that'll be July 8th through 10th. Um, and then we will be attending um, a local event here, Park City Point to Point. That is another big bike race. It's a 75 mile bike race in Park City with like 15,000 vertical feet of climbing. Crazy people do it. It's awesome. Um, we'll be at the finish line there with a nap pod so they, they can rest. Um, and then nap, oh, nap, nap pod. Nap okay. pod. I gotcha. <laughs> I shouldn't make any promises I can't commit to. Um, and then Overland Expo East, uh, we will be attending again. Um, that is October 7th through 9th in Arrington, Virginia. Yep. And I just want to add to the seeing the value of seeing Topo 2 in person is huge. We had customers come by just yesterday to see it. And some of their big takeaways were how user friendly the stove is at that height, which can be kind of deceiving when you just see it in pictures and also how huge the tongue box is, which also you can't quite tell yeah. just from an image on a screen. So those are two yeah, big the, things, the, but there's the tons of- The stove is not low at all. If, if, you, if you like using your stove at home, it's the same height, right. 36 inches, right? Yes. So lots of little things that they noticed that you can't quite take away unless you have it in person, but those were two major ones. Yeah, great. So. Awesome, thank you for adding that.